Greetings, listeners. Today, I would like to discuss the effects of prayer. Now, my name's a Pastor Robert Clancy, all the way from Perth, Australia. I'm a missionary preacher, traveling the nations of the earth, proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the old rugged cross. And today, I'm excited to talk about prayer and effective prayer at that. So today, I will take my first text from 1 John 5, 14 to 15. It says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of Him. See, when we have faith in the Word of God, then it builds us up. It builds our faith up to ask for the impossible. Because Jesus even said, even if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can remove a mountain. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you like to have that type of faith? The type of faith that is so ingrained in who Jesus Christ is. He is the living word. So we're not just having faith in text. No, we're having faith in the living word of God, which is Jesus Christ. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the word that became flesh. So when we have faith in the Word of God, it builds us up. And also, it builds us up in prayer. You know, I always say to people, small prayer with small faith is a small answer. But big prayer with big faith is a big answer. And extraordinarily, extraordinarily effective prayer with extraordinarily effective faith will also have extraordinarily humongous results. So I encourage you today as we take on this teaching that you understand that there is more to prayer than just going through a consecutive prayer life. But there is an effective. The Lord has shown me that depending on the city, that I, wherever I go, depending on the level of darkness in that particular city, it creates a blanket over that city. And that blanket is not something that is soft that you sleep with, but that blanket becomes like hard rock. So there are three different groups of people that I would like to talk about today. Now, let's talk about prayer first. You do not just say, well, I feel like praying. If your prayer life is like, well, I feel like praying today, so I'll pray, then that will be the level of the effectiveness that you'll get. But no, make an appointment with God every day and keep that appointment. Just as though you were going for an interview, you would have to make sure that you are there five minutes early. You'd be punctual. So should you be with God. Make an appointment with God and keep that every day. See, when we pray very effectively, it can even make a man to stop sinning. But sin will come to entice a man to stop him from praying. So prayer has a lot of power to move things, move sin, to move situations in your life, to bring healing, to bring deliverance. You can even bring self-deliverance to yourself. You can even bring healing to yourself if you have faith in your prayer life to believe God can do all things. See. We have to pray with our eyes on God and not on our problems, not on our situations, not on the difficulties that we might be passing through at that particular time in our life. So what happens in the spiritual realm? Well, as I've mentioned, there is that blanket that comes over, that it comes over a city. So depending on the sins of that city, depending on the strongholds of that city. See, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 from verse 10 right through to verse 13 and beyond, it says the weapons of our warfare, they are not in the flesh and blood, but they're against principalities and powers and hosts of wickedness and high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. See, there is a spiritual realm that you're coming up against. And that spiritual realm wants to hinder your prayers. But unless you know about this realm, then you won't have effective prayers. So today, I want to talk about those three people. The first group of people are many people where their prayers go up like incense, and the incense goes up like smoke. But as soon as it enters into the air, it just is blown away by the wind. 
Now the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 9, 31, it says, now we know that God does not hear the prayers of sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him only. See, that group of people have sin in their life and then they wonder why God doesn't answer them. Then they start to stop praying with God and they'll always have to go to someone else to pray on their behalf because they haven't chosen to go away and sin no more, as Jesus said. So sin is a hindrance to our prayer and it's like it has no effect in the spiritual realm of breaking through this blanket. The second group of people are those that come before God and they pray. They're righteous before God, but there are some things that they don't understand. Firstly, they don't understand the Word of God. They don't know how to use the Word of God. They don't understand the principles of the Word of God and prayer. So their prayer goes up like incense, but as soon as it hits this spiritual blanket of rock, it does not have the power to penetrate through the rock for it to be effective. And the Bible tells us in James 4 verse 3, it says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask amiss, you pray amiss that you may spend it upon your own things. Meaning what God is saying is that when we pray, if we're praying amiss, if you were to have a bow and arrow and you were to aim it at the bullseye in that target, you would have to learn to practice and understand the skill to be able to get the center. But if you were to just pick up that bow and arrow and point it any direction, you'd be pointing it away from the target and it would just be a miss. So when we pray, we must know what we are praying for. What is the purpose of prayer? What does the Bible tell us about prayer and how we can pray effectively? Maybe you're saying to yourself, well, pastor, I've been praying for years for things to happen, but they do don't seem to happen. Maybe it's because you're praying amiss. And there are different types of prayer. There are prayer where you just come and spend some quiet time with God. There is prayer where you're just lifting up certain petitions unto the Lord. And there is also warfare prayer, where warfare prayer has to break through certain elements. So he will come to the third person. The third person is a very prayerful person. They understand and have articulated the Word of God within their prayer life. The Bible says that, Faith comes from hearing and hearing of the Word of God. If you are not hearing of the Word of God, you're not reading the Word of God, then you're not going to have the faith and the prayer life to be able to be effective. So here we see this person, they're righteous before God, but as they pray, it goes up like a flame of fire and it goes up and it penetrates through this hard blanket. It's like rock and it melts through this blanket and it's starts to melt away and it creates like a hole that this prayer then goes straight up through the hole and goes up into heaven and no evading forces, no hindering spirits, no hindering demons or anything is able to touch this prayer because it goes straight up to the throne room of God. And then we see in the book of Revelations that the angels come and capture this and place it into bowls and then burn it as incense once again up to God. And the Bible says that God responds with lightning to those prayers. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you like your prayers to be responded with lightning? So as it goes up, then appears an open heaven over that person's life. So from that point on, once they've broken through that blanket of rock that's within that particular city over that particular person's life, then they are able to penetrate through. And that open heaven makes it easier for them to pray. Maybe in the past you've found periods of time that you found it easy to pray. You found it easy to come into the presence of the Lord. Maybe it's because you had an open heaven over that time of your life. Maybe you're needing that breakthrough and God is bringing this teaching to bring you to that element, to bring you to that area that you may be able to pray effectively. See what will happen even to the person in this third 
uh, this, this third group is that Satan will try to come along. Even when you've got open heaven, because they can't come and attack your prayers, what they'll do is they'll try to distract your prayers. How does he do that? The phone will ring while you're praying. Maybe you're feeling hungry and you're wanting to go and get something to eat. So it's going to distract your prayers. Maybe you've got your phone and, and the notifications of your social media are going off and, and you're putting that more important than you are your God. So the devil knows how to distract you. Or maybe you're getting a pain in your body, which is stopping you from praying, not knowing that that's a spiritual hindrance that's coming in there to stop you from getting that effectiveness in your prayer. That's what the devil tries to come. He tries to come and attack you, trying to come and pull you away from those very things. See, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, from verse 24 to 25, it says, Jesus speaks a parable and he says, another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. But while he was sowing good seed in his field, it says, but while the men slept that night, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus said the enemy came to sow the wrong seed while the man was asleep. This emphasizes the point that the mysteries that seem to happen in our lives tend to happen that happen during the day. You say, where did that come from? How come this has happened to me? It's because something was hatched at the night time. Something happened at the night time where the enemy, the devil came to hatch something. See, the day only wakes to manifest what has been done in the night. So I'm going to talk about that more so you understand where I'm coming from. As Christians, we need to learn to pray effectively. That can only contradict or combat or counteract the enemy's plans to planting. What does he come to plant in our lives? What do these seeds represent? Discouragement, depression, that feeling of failure, that feeling of oppression, that feeling of things and also things being lost from us and stolen from us, you know, over your life, over your family's life, over your friend's life. See, the majority of evil put together by the enemy against a man is done in the nighttime. And it's done between the hours of 12 and 3. Why do you say this? Because that is when the enemy's attacks usually come against you. That's their plan. See, what happens is the agents of Satan that you may have witch doctors or whatever those are, they come and they plan their things against people in those particular hours. That's what they do. This is the truth. And what that happens is they come and do these unholy practices against people that they may then play out their plans the next day. So what they do is they do these things, they make the plans, and then the demons then go and play out those things. You've ever wondered why that accident happened to you that day or certain things that have come against you. See, God, the plans God has for you, the Bible says, they are good plans that gives you a future and a hope. He doesn't have any bad intentions for us. God doesn't make bad things happen. It is the devil's plans to come against us. But what happens is, what, what, what happens is as we sleep, when we don't pray, see many Christians don't pray at night time. And if we pray effectively at the time that our enemy is at work, then we can counteract those things. If you were to uh, do boxing in the ring, and if someone was to attack you, then you would have to be on the defense that you can counteract a against that opponent. But if you just don't know and you've got your gloves down, you're just going to be attacked without even knowing. And before you know it, the, the match will finish and you'll be the loser. But that's the same in the spiritual realm. You must understand your opponent. You must be ready to counteract the, uh, the, 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 the attack of the enemy that's coming against you. See, what happens, this is what happens. Imagine if someone's angry at you. And they might say to you, hey, you will see. They might finish with that statement as though they've made a threat to you. Or they might say, I will show you. And they'll finish with that threat. 
Now, some people will just leave it at that. But other people that have evil intentions will go and, and go and follow that threat through. Because what they'll do is they'll go to the local witch or the local um, Satanist or whoever it is that's working against the people of God. And they'll come and they'll say, can you please put a curse on this particular person? Can you please make sure the downfall of this particular person? That's what the enemy does. And what happens is that very person, that agent of Satan then goes and takes your request and starts doing those unholy things against you between the hours of 12 and 3 at night. And that's what they do. They'll make a folder for you. They'll make a folder with your name and they will come and do those bad things against you. And then you're wondering why you're not able to break through in life. There's certain things that you're not able to to get that breakthrough. And you may even say, well, I'm a Christian. Why is these things happening to me? Why isn't God coming against me? Well, maybe you have found yourself in either one or two in those two different groups. Maybe your prayers are not being effective within this hour. So let's Let's look at that because these people that are in group three, they have an ability when they're in an open heaven, they're also able even to create an atmosphere for others. So when others come into that atmosphere of their fire, where their prayer life is full, then they are able to have an effect. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter uh, 26, verse 20, it says, When there is no wood, the fire goes out. That is common sense. When you have a fire and there is no wood, that fire is going to go out. Maybe your fire was also lit. Maybe you had an open heaven at one particular point in time. But what are those elements of the wood? How do we get the wood on there? The wood are your prayer life. The wood is your worship life. The wood is the time you spend with intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ. The wood is the time you spend reading the Word of God. Are you reading the Word of God? And as you place those things on the fire, you keep them that fire lit. And what happens is if you're in Africa and you were sleeping in the terrain, there are wild beasts that come that can come and attack you. So what you do at night is you create a fire and that fire is lit as a safety thing because the beast will not come near the fire because they are frightened of the fire. And that's the same with the enemy. The enemy will come into your life if your fire has gone out because you'll be an easy target. But when that fire is lit and strong, then the enemy cannot come into your life and cause any effect on you. So let's look at the Word of God here. The Bible says in Matthew 11 verse 12, it says, And the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers in violent, and the violent take it by force. We must learn to take things by force. Now, when I drive on Indian roads, I can't drive the same way I do in Australia. If I was to give way for every single person, I think that I would be there all day. You need to learn to drive according to the place. So here, people have drive by force. They don't tend to let people in. They just drive, drive, drive until they get to their destination. You must learn, and the same as the Bible is saying here, we must learn to take things by force through prayer. Hallelujah. And it says, how often should we pray? Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer, with all supplication, in the Spirit, being watchful to the very end. We must pray it always. 1 Thessalonians 5 17 says, pray without ceasing. How should we pray? Well, the Bible gives us an illustration here. Jesus himself said in Matthew 6, 5 to 8 says, But you, when you pray in your closet, when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in the secret will also reward you openly. Hallelujah. This is God's plan. Psalm 66, verse 17. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Hallelujah. He was happy with what I was saying unto God. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And I will also pray with understanding and I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing also with understanding. Hallelujah. How is your prayer life? You must learn to pray with your normal language and you must also learn to pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says in James 1, 6, it says, But let 
let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Hallelujah. And we're now in the middle of monsoon season. We're seeing what's happening in the oceans. We're seeing the roughness of the oceans. But when we pray, we must pray without any doubt. When I'm praying for the heal, when I'm praying for the sick to be recovered, I must pray without any doubt that that person will be healed. And then you'll find that those people are healed. I, when I'm praying for deliverance, I pray without any doubt that God is going to come and deliver that person. And that's exactly what happens. When I'm praying for God to just come and touch a person's life, I pray without doubt that God's going to come and He moves mountains. Hallelujah. Even the heart of the hardest of heart of purple can be changed and transformed. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible Bible tells us also in Matthew 6, 9, 13, it says he, Jesus is teaching us how to pray. Our, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, which is the word of God. The word of God says a man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. Our daily bread is the word of God coming into you, giving you that. And he says, because, you know, we must forgive those who trespass against us that we also may be forgiven. What is God saying there? Maybe there's still offense into your life. If there's offense into your life, then your prayers are not going to be answered. So you must release those people that your prayers may be effective. Hallelujah. See, a person that is powerful in prayer creates an atmosphere of heaven and where they are, they will also bring others out of bondage. Hallelujah. But what the devil will do is those people that you are affecting to bring them into freedom, if they choose, if they make that, 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 that free choice to not come back or, or to, to leave that after being in that presence, the devil will do everything to stop them ever coming into that environment again. That's the plan of the devil because he knows that that person that has the fire has the ability to take others out of the enemy's camp. So where are you today? The Ephesians 6.10 we must understand that we're in a spiritual battle. What does the Bible says? It put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith to fire off the fiery darts of the enemy, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We must understand the importance of the weapons. Number two, we must understand the relationship of ministering spirits. They are angels. The Bible says that angels come to take heed to God's word, to heed to the ministers speaking God's word. When we speak God's word, angels come and minister unto his saints. They do. They're commanded by God. We say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, send your ministering angels to surround this house. They will move because the Father will direct them to. Because anything we ask in the name of Jesus, according to his will, it shall be granted unto the saints. So when we learn how to pray effectively, it will bring a change. The, whole, the third part is the Holy Spirit and understanding. He is not our slave. The Holy Spirit is not our slave, but he is there to please our Lord Jesus Christ. He's there to lift him up. So no matter where you are today, maybe your prayer life has been ineffective. Maybe your prayer life, you're not getting that breakthrough in your life. Now it is time for you to learn to stand on your feet and fight the good fight, the battle says. And the Bible tells us we must fight the good fight. And he who had called you will also finish what he has started. Hallelujah. So wherever you are today, today it is your turn to come back to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I need this prayer to be a effective today. So today I just want to pray for you. But first we want you to give your life to Christ. So repeat after me with all of your heart and mind and close your eyes right now. Repeat this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, today I come before you just as I am. I repent of all of my sins and today I am washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Help me to forgive all those people that have offended me. And Heavenly Father, I receive your gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and I receive him as my best friend, my Lord, my God, my Saviour. And from today, I am born again, and I'm never going to be the same 
because you're going to lead me on paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. So if you want an effective prayer life, then you must start to get into the Word of God. Understand these principles. Listen to this teaching again, that you may grow and grow and that your prayers may be effective, that you may be able to combat that spiritual blanket that may be covering and surrounding your area, that you may get an open heaven that God may hear you and that the angels will be there at guard to be sent to you as ministering angels also. Understand these principles that God may use you to be effective. Hallelujah. God bless you today and we thank you that you've been blessed and that you'll watch this program again soon. Amen. I come back to the house of my God with a bird Of a contrite heart